Well, hello everyone and welcome to Lobbying 201. Uh, in this lesson tonight, we are going to discuss what you can do to prepare yourself for a successful meeting with a member of Congress. And specifically, we're gonna talk about um, really it's sort of the research you can do, uh, all the tools that we have available for you. And we'll get a, 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 take a, a pretty deep dive as well into the roles that you can assume in a lobby meeting. And then we're gonna finish up with the uh, importance of practice. And we're gonna talk about um, um, you know, why that's so important, but also talk about some uh, ways, some times you will actually have to practice ahead of this year's conference in DC. So I'm gonna introduce you to your co-host for this lesson. That's me, Ricky Bradley, uh, North Dallas, Texas group leader and uh, fiddle around with some IT stuff for Citizens Columbia Lobby as well. And then we also have uh, although he doesn't like to be called Dr. Danny Richter, he is Dr. Danny Richter, he is our uh, Director of Research. Uh, tonight, Danny's going to uh, talk to us uh, about some of the studies that we have available and also um, go into our supporting ask and talk about the role of a leader in our meeting. So, uh, and we'll both be sticking around to take questions at the end. Uh, the lesson is being recorded tonight. We will uh, uh, go through the lesson and we'll, we'll take uh, time for questions at the end. Everyone has been muted now to begin with. Uh, to mute and unmute your, your line, you can press star six on your phone. Uh, you can feel free to ask a question in, in the middle of the presentation, that's fine. So you would just star six on your phone to unmute yourself. If you're online, uh, you would click the little mute symbol, the microphone or the little icon that's in the lower left-hand portion of your screen. And um, if you can, use headphones, but if you're just asking a question real quick, uh, we might be able to get by with the, uh, the, the computer microphone, but that's fine. If you have headphones, please use those. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, jump right in and talk about the research and the tools that CCL provides lobby teams. And just the first thing I'll let you know is um, in a minute, we'll also be uh, showing you where some of these tools exist on CCL community. And there's a page on community uh, that actually has all these tools just right on one page. And it's really accessible, it's right off the home page. We'll be demonstrating that in just a moment. So don't feel like you need to try to uh, figure out where all these things are. We'll show you a quick and dirty, easy way to get to these things here in just a few moments. All right, so what are the things we're gonna talk about tonight? We're gonna talk about congressional biographies and some fantastic news about those. Uh, we're gonna talk about meeting minutes. We'll talk about and my Alexa is talking to me. Sorry about that, you heard her. Uh, we're gonna talk about meeting plans. Uh, again, Danny's gonna cover uh, a lot of the studies that we have available, you know, the household impact study, the Remy study, uh, dividend delivery study, and some others. Uh, we're also gonna talk about the top topics tool. And that's something that was uh, really cool that we created uh, towards the end of last year. I don't think enough people know about it, so we wanna make sure we review that tonight, show you how to find it and how to use it. Uh, we'll also talk about laser talks, and uh, we'll also talk about the, probably the most important thing that you'll have for your meeting, some supporting asks that give you the reason to keep moving uh, your member of Congress towards car supporting carbon fee and dividend. All right, so I'm going to get us started. Uh, we're going to start off talking about biographies. So uh, for those of you who are sort of new to CCL, in the past, we used to ask all of our volunteers to fill out this web form with all this information, go collect all this great data on our members of Congress. And while it was a useful exercise and probably helped people get to know their member of Congress very well, um, you know, it's subject to uh, people's opinions. They can enter what they want, what they don't want. And uh, also uh, it was a lot of work. <laughs> and so this year we're proud to announce that um, we've created biographies that uh, really is, uh, we've automated them, or Tony Cerna has in our IT department, and it's really uh, just publicly available information that we have been able to grab from databases all across the internet. And so um, we'll have biographical data on the member of Congress, what schools they attended, their background, their career, their interests, uh, even their religion. Um, and then we'll also have some congressional record information. So we'll have some voting records on some relevant bills and things that are important to us, committee assignments, uh, all that types of uh, information. And why this is important is because all of this data, whether it's biographical or the types of votes they've taken in their record, all of this information uh, really comes together to form, uh, help, help the member form, uh, you know, their decision and factors in that decision making process that they have. So reviewing the bio along with all the previous meeting minutes will help you to not only know and anticipate questions, 
um, but really also develop an understanding of why they've taken the positions they have and you know, who these people are and, and, and what um, um, and possibly within their own peer groups, uh, what type of influence that they may have. So if you're going to DC, you're going to get a copy of the biographies uh, the week before the conference for the people that you'll be meeting with. Next thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about our meeting minutes. And I'll tell you on the right hand side of the screen right now, what you'll see is a redacted example of some meeting minutes. Uh, but, you know, this information is highly sensitive, right? Because this is um, the, you know, the note taker sitting in a meeting, taking the notes, uh, sharing that one on one private conversation and capturing all that, or not one on one, I'm sorry, capturing that uh, private information into a form that we upload um, into a database. And then we, we distribute the meeting minutes to our liaisons. And um, the previous me meeting minutes, you know, it, what we really do is represent information that was shared in confidence with us. And, you know, this is one of the, the most important things at CCL is that um, they, Congress does trust us to keep information private and to keep information um, that we know to be sensitive uh, out of the public purview. So just think about, you know, if this information was leaked, it really could destroy some of the trust that we've been developing with Congress. So for those of you going to DC, again, the liaisons and the meeting leader for each meeting will receive the previous meeting minutes and they may sh choose to share the me uh, previous meeting minutes with you or they may choose just to sort of tell you, oh, well, here's where we are with this member of Congress and you know, here's some ideas that I have, you know, for this meeting. So. Um, you know, don't be upset if they don't choose to share them with you. Uh, there may be some really sensitive information they just do not want getting out. Um, we do not share our notes with anyone outside of CCL, for sure. So, Eliezer may choose to share them with you, but we don't share our notes with anyone outside of CCL. You know, but that said, we do trust our volunteers. We trust everyone to keep this information. We do distribute it, um, and we rely on you guys to, to make the right decisions. You know, reviewing these notes will help you to prepare to address questions, see what types of misconceptions there might be about our policy from previous minutes, and it'll really help, uh, help you clarify uh, what you should be uh, discussing or maybe the, the tack that you'll take in the meeting this year. You know, an example would be, you know, if, if in the last couple of meetings you've had, you, you see from the meeting minutes that uh, there's been a lot of confusion around the border adjustment and how that works, well, you should know then, okay, well, this is something I really need to be prepared to, to address. And so that's what the meeting minutes are for. It's really like Congress telling us, hey, here, here's what you better prepare for for this next meeting. All right, next up we're going to talk about meeting plans, right? So I got all the boring stuff. Danny's going to talk about the cool stuff here in just a moment. But meeting plans. So lobby meeting plans are, are uh, really what they say. They're, they're meeting plans that are created by the, the congressional liaisons and lobby teams uh, for a a district or a group uh, before they go in to meet with a member of Congress. Now, the plan is advisory only and it's meant to sort of you know, get you in the right frame and uh, maybe help you anticipate where the meeting's going to go to establish some goals for the meeting. Make sure someone's looked up the appreciation because remember we always start our meetings with appreciation and those types of things. Um, it also will give you a chance to uh, coalesce around a supporting ask which Danny's going to talk about here in just a few moments and why that's so important. And also brainstorm questions. There's always that point in the meeting where it seems like sometimes it gets stuck, right? If you got your meeting plan, you've already brainstormed some questions or some ideas where you want the meeting to go, uh, you should be able just to sort of glance down at your notes or your meeting plan and be able to get yourself out of that. Now for, C for DC, for lobby days, um, we do ask uh, that you submit a meeting plan online. And then what happens is, uh, everyone on the team that's going to be in that meeting uh, will receive a copy of the meeting plan the week before uh, we, we go to DC. So that's good, right? That means even if someone from Bend, Oregon is joining a meeting for someone in DeLand, Florida, uh, for that member of Congress, that person in Bend, Oregon will have the meeting plan and will know, even though I'm not a constituent, uh, I've never been in a meeting with this person before, I know what this meeting's about. I've got the plan. We're ready to go. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn it over to uh, Danny. And Danny's going to really just begin discussing some of the studies and uh, research uh, that uh, his office, he's got an office in D.C., uh, and what they've been working on and a couple of other uh, meeting tools as well. All right. Thank you very much, Ricky. 
Uh, so yeah, CCL has some studies that we've uh, we've put out. Uh, the first, of course, is our REMI study. REMI stands for Regional Economic Models Incorporated. This is a study we had done in 2014. Uh, and the reason we had this done, for all the three studies that we did, we were trying to be responsive to members of Congress. We were lobbying them, and we noticed that they certain things that we were saying just weren't uh, weren't getting through. So on the REMI report specifically, we uh, we were really interested in being able to get a bit of specificity. We wanted a, a modeling run that looked at the macroeconomics of our policy specifically. Prior to this, we were cobbling together different uh, economic studies that weren't quite our proposal. We needed one that was on our study specifically. And another really important point that I thought uh, we needed to make was connecting the economics of carbon fee and dividend with the lives saved. I think that uh, the medical uh, case is certainly important to me, and I think it's um, I think it's important to members of Congress. So we were able to combine that all in one study. And what that report does is it projects into the future, 20 years specifically, how carbon fee and dividend would impact nine regions of the United States. It talks about jobs created. Uh, economic benefit, the specific industries that would be affected, um, and as I mentioned, lives saved. In addition to, importantly for us, carbon emissions reduced. So it's quite a it's quite a study. The next study that we uh, undertook is we call our household impact study, and this was to respond to a question we were getting uh, persistently, which was, you know, how will carbon fee and dividend impact people in my district. So having those nine regions was just it just wasn't good enough. And so we wanted to we wanted to drill down. And what that household impact study does, it's a microeconomic study, whereas the Remy report is a macroeconomic study. And uh, what that means for, for the CCL lobbyist is that while the Remy report projects 20 years into the future, the household impact study is just the first year of the policy but it's based on real spending patterns, what people actually spent their money on from a period 2008 to 2012. And it's that specificity, that, that what people actually spent their money on, that enables us to get to every single congressional district, um, different economic income quintiles. We can break it down by people in the district, by race, uh, by um, where they live, uh, by their age, uh, and various other factors. So that is a really great study for getting to how will carbon fee and dividend impact the people in my district. Then in 2015, uh, we noticed that the most frequently asked question was, Oops. Oh, I think we lost Danny. <laughs> yeah, Danny, I think we lost you, but I'll pick up here. And uh, you can try to get back on here. Uh, Amy, if you would text Danny, just let him know that we're, he's not on right now. So uh, I'll pick up where Danny was, uh, where he dropped off here. You know, the dividend delivery study, again, was a, uh, you know, we listened to members of Congress and they, one of the, the main questions they had coming out of our meetings was, you know, well, how would this dividend work particularly? So, you know, you know how is it collected? How would it be returned? What would citizens have to do? What would be the government's role uh, in the dividend as well? And so that was the, the idea behind the dividend delivery study. And that, again, that's another study. Um, if you look on your previous meeting plans and you can see your member of Congress has had questions about that in the past or your meeting minutes, um, then that's probably a study that you want to brush up on and, and, and really get into the, the details about how uh, the, the dividend could be returned. And then the last one, and this is a new one this year, it's a working paper released by the Treasury Department's Office of Tax Analysis. So that's what OTA stands for there. So sorry to throw out the three letter acronym, uh, but on the slide, just trying to save a little room, but that's the Treasury Office of Tax Analysis. And they just did a working paper on, uh, it's called Methodology for Analyzing a Carbon Tax. Uh, and really what it does is it looks at uh, a carbon tax at a certain level and, um, uh, and looks at different use case scenarios for the for the money and what would be done with those. 
And uh, one of the scenarios is uh, return to American households. So I think it'd be really instructive uh, for us, and I know some of us have been even uh, setting this up as the reason for our meetings this year, is to review that type of information, this, uh, this working paper with our uh, energy and environment aid. So again, another study that we have available uh, for our volunteers to prepare for their meetings. Is uh, Danny, are you back on yet? No? I'll keep rolling. All right. Next uh, tool we're going to talk about is our top topics tool. Uh, and this is something that, you know, if you're new to CCL, what happens after a conference is really pretty amazing. Uh, Danny and his uh, group of elves back in the DC office uh, take our meeting minutes, all the meeting minutes that you submit, and they slice and dice and read through them, categorize things, and really uh, what it does is it comes up, it gives us a lot of information and a lot of ways to um, uh, figure out what we need to do next year, right? And, and how do we need to be prepared for the, for the, for the next year? And so this is really uh, the top topics tool came out of last year's meeting and it'll probably change this year to this year's meeting, but really what it is, it's a, a series of um, uh, here, here are the topics and here are all the ways to address those that we have tools available for you to address those things. So let's take a look at this real quick. Let's, I'm gonna stop sharing uh, my screen real quick and I'm gonna show and demonstrate this on CCL Community. One second. <laughs> all right, so hopefully everyone can see my screen right now. Um, I, I did mention that, you know, all of this information you can find from one page uh, on community. So here we are on the home page. Uh, if you scroll down just a little bit, hopefully you see the good news here. Two new sponsors, hopefully the climate resolution. But if I scroll down, uh, you'll see we have this Washington DC toolkit. And by clicking on that, it's going to have everything you need to get ready for DC and it, honestly just uh, any meeting in general. Um, but uh, one of the things that's available here, if you scroll down, when you get to the preparation piece, uh, it says frequently raised topics. So I'm going to click on that link and you can also search for that. Just type in top topics into the search bar. And here's the top topics tool once we get to this page. <clears throat> and again, what you can see is it's just a series of accordions. That's what these little uh, things are called on a web page. Uh, and says, okay, in, in, in our uh, 2015 June meetings, uh, the Climate Solutions Caucus was brought up 32% of the time. Now, granted, the Climate Solutions Caucus probably brought up mostly by us. Uh, but then these others, probably a little more instructive. Again, you can see dividend was the second highest, um, or the second most frequently raised topic in our meetings. And so if you open up that accordion, you can see we have all of our webinars and dividend study and laser talks that can address that. Uh, the clean power plan probably won't be coming up so much this year, uh, but that was uh, the, the third uh, highest rated topic from last year. Uh, impact on low income households. You can see if you go through and expand these, uh, you'll have all the resources that you might need to uh, address the, the concern from that member of Congress. And so if you go back and look at your previous meeting minutes and you can see, oh, my member of Congress was, or this meet, person I'm meeting with was really concerned about jobs, uh, I could click on this topic title here and I'll have all the information I need to, uh, you know, start a conversation or to, uh, you know, give them the information that they're looking for. So that's the top topics tool. Uh, really excited to have that. And uh, thanks to Danny for uh, really helping to pull that together after uh, June of last year. And we hope to update that June of this year as well. Now you're also going to receive a, um, uh, a packet of laser talks. So for those of you that are going um, to DC, uh, before you get to DC, you're gonna receive uh, lots of information. And one of the things you're going to receive, or you can pull off the CCL uh, community right now. I'm trying to get over there, sorry. Um, is a, a packet of laser talks that we think are the most important laser talks for, for this year's conference. Give me one second, my mouse just died. Switching mouses. Okay, good. All right. And laser talks packets, right? So we're going to have a packet of laser talks that we'll be able to uh, send and that are on CCL community. Or again, from that one page that I just showed you, uh, you can access the laser talks that are specific to the 2017 conference or really 2017 in general. Uh, Danny, are you back on yet? Wow. Okay. 
Danny was really not like anybody here. I'll tell you. It's, all right. So I'm going to talk about asks and supporting asks. So uh, an ask is simply this. What do we want our member of Congress to do? Right. And we always have a primary ask or to call it our main ask. And that is to uh, ask the member of Congress to introduce or support uh, legislation that puts a rising fee on carbon and returns the net proceeds back to American households. Right. And we never want to go into a meeting and not present our primary ask or a main ask. You should always do that, right? Don't negotiate with yourself. Swing for the fences. Always ask for that up front. But we know that not every member of Congress is ready to do the things that we want them to do yet. And that maybe possibly there are some minor things that they could do, some small steps that they can take along the way. So once you've uh, delivered your ask, wait for the answer. Let them tell you no or why not, and then be able to pivot into a supporting ask. And so this is something that you should prepare ahead of time, again, with the meeting plan, uh, with the liaison, with the lobby team. What, what would our supporting ask be for this member of Congress? And it may be different depending on who the member of Congress is, right? If, they, um, uh, if they're on a certain committee, maybe you're gonna, your supporting ask is that they hold a hearing. Um, if, uh, you know, just all kinds of different scenarios, right? So every, we, we trust, here's the, here's the key about supporting ask is that um, it's not something that we can tell you guys what to do because you are on the ground, you're local, you understand better than anyone uh, what the flavor is in that district and uh, what needs to happen. Oh, there's Danny, hey. Yeah, I, I apologize everybody, I tried on four different devices to call in and I think, <laughs> I think what happened is that uh you know my comcast went down one of those devices was my landline but it does also run through that so now i'm i'm using my wireless so my apologies uh, oh no worries i'll tell you what let me just finish up with this part and then i'll have you review the the supporting ask how's that All right, that sounds good yeah so we were just saying you know Dan, so we're talking about the primary ask and making sure that you deliver it and you wait for an answer don't negotiate with yourself and that you know, supporting asks uh, are, are those smaller asks that you can um, ask of your member of Congress, depending upon the situation, to get them to, to continue moving forward. Because remember, uh, we don't want to just be told no and leave. We want to uh, have another meeting and continue to move in the relationship forward. So we'll give them a smaller ask. It's a smaller thing. It's a, it's a step forward. And here's the key. Um, and a, a supporting ask should be something that's very specific and very actionable and something that you can measure as well, right? So if you ask them to join the Climate Solutions Caucus, obviously that's something you can see. Did they do that or not? Uh, or, but if you just say, hey, I want you, uh, I'd like you to support, you know, legislation that's uh, climate friendly. Well, you know, that's a little more um, uh, vague, right? Might be a little more harder to follow up on. So try to be very specific and make sure it's actionable. And now Danny's going to do, what he's going to do here is really uh, talk about some of the various supporting asks to give you some ideas of some things that you could do in different uh, Republican and Democratic offices um, this June. Uh, yes, I am. And hopefully, hopefully I'll stay on this time. My apologies again to everybody. Uh, so supporting asks. First of all, we'll go down for Republicans and then we'll cover it for Democrats. D Danny, could you speak up? Could you speak up a little bit? Yeah, I can try. Thank you. Uh, is this any better? I don't know. I'll yeah. let you know. It's a little bit better. All right. So we're going to cover the supporting asks. First, I'll go over the supporting asks for Republicans, and then we'll go over uh, the asks for Democrats. First supporting ask that you could choose to ask of your Republican member of Congress is uh, to sign the Republican Climate Resolution. This is an ask that is only appropriate for Republicans in the House because the Republican climate resolution is submitted in the House. It is H Res 195 in the House. The second thing you can ask your Republican member of Congress to do is to join the Climate Solutions Caucus. And while this is also only in the House, we would love to see a comparable entity in the Senate. So a place where Democrats and Republicans are sitting down next to each other talking about policy solutions to our, our, our climate uh, problem, that would be, that'd be wonderful. 
Another thing you can ask your Republican to do is to hold a climate town hall. So a town hall in district focused specifically on climate change. CCL volunteers in Utah in Mia Love's district did this and uh, subsequently Mia Love joined both the resolution and the Climate Solutions Caucus. And uh, it was certainly a lot of work for our team in Utah, but they pulled it off and had great results. So a, a town hall uh, specifically focused on climate can be a useful and productive um, ask. May I ask if that um, Mia Love's uh, town hall was initiated by us? Yes. Awesome. Yes. Uh, you can also request a hearing. Uh, so this would be most appropriate for chairman of caucuses, or excuse me, not caucuses, of committees in Congress, and they're the ones who can call hearings. Uh, if they are a subcommittee chairman, uh, they, I think they can also call hearings. So you would want to do some research, you would want to consult with your bio, and then you would want to make sure that when you prepare this supporting ask, uh, you make sure that the topic is relevant to the the, the purpose of their committee or their subcommittee. Another thing that you can do, another resource we have available is uh, to help you review polling. So Tony Cerna has pulled information from the Yale Project on Climate Communications, Climate Change Communications, and he's put it onto a one-page document specific to every congressional district. So just like our household impact study uh, goes down to the district level, the Yale Project on Climate Change Communications has polling data uh, based on a model which is specific to every district. And Tony has pulled a, a few questions which are relevant to our issue and put them on a one-page document uh, specific to every congressional district. Another thing you can do is you can ask them to review new reports. So you could ask them to review any of the studies I uh, was in the process of discussing when I dropped off uh, the REMI study, the household impact study, the dividend delivery study, and the uh, office of tax analysis study. This is also, office of tax analysis is within the treasury department and we have a summary page for that as well as an FAQ. Uh, so you could ask them to review those reports. Uh, there may be some other report that you want them to review and that is, that is great as well. For Democrats, uh, of course, we can ask them to join the Climate Solutions Caucus. And for Democrats, it's not as straightforward as Republicans. There is a waiting list for Democrats, but they can cut the line if they bring their own Republican, B-Y-O-R. So if there is a Democrat and they work well with a Republican uh, on some other issue, that is generally what has worked. There are examples of Democrats finding a Republican to join with them. And it has worked best when there's a previous relationship between that Democrat and that Republican. Uh, so that's what um, I would ask them to look for. It doesn't work so well when CCL folks uh, try to try to match make. We're not, we don't have a good track record of matchmaking uh, and it's, it's quite difficult to do. So it's really best if your, your Democrat finds a Republican they already work well with. Another useful ask for Democrats is to commit to revenue neutrality. Uh, this is, a lot of Democrats are, have a preference for revenue positivity. They want to use the, the revenue from a carbon tax for other programs that would, uh, generally speaking, that would help reduce uh, emissions in other ways. So want to reinvest in renewables or uh, energy efficiency, something like that. The reason we're asking them to commit to revenue neutrality is we, we don't think that that is a, is a productive way forward with Republicans. Uh, Republicans will see that as an attempt to grow the government. And uh, with Republicans in tr control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency, uh, we think that a, a, a statement by Democrats that they are willing to do revenue neutrality can build goodwill and can, can help some discussion on getting carbon fee and dividend uh, passed. Another ask is to review REMI with a Republican or really any of the studies that uh, I mentioned. Um, this is basically an ask that turns your, uh, your Democratic member of Congress into a CCL lobbyist. 
taking important resources relevant to our issue and sharing them with the governing party. I think that's, uh, that's an important one. Another one is connect us to influencers. This is one I'm actually, uh, I think is quite important. Observing as I have over the years, uh, how Democrats who have worked really, really hard uh, with, with, to do something on climate change have been frustrated. I think that our volunteers who have established the best working relationships with Democrats have provided a source of hope or inspiration to them. And they've gone, once they do that, they get Democrats excited thinking that we can do something on this. And then they start working together as a team. So it's not bringing them a resource, it's, it's working together brainstorming about how to move forward. And one way that you can brainstorm with them is how, who are the influencers in our district who will make it easier for you to come out in favor of carbon fee and dividend? Or even better, who are the influencers in our district who would help Republicans come out on carbon fee and dividend? Because influence is not, doesn't respect congressional boundaries. So you have many instances where you have a Democratic district right next to a Republican district, or you have a Democratic member of Congress, and yet there's Republican senators. So uh, connecting, asking to be connected with Republican influencers in your district or in your state, that can really be a productive way of working together with your Democrat uh, and helping them find hope again in that we can do something on climate. Reviewing polling is also very interesting to Democrats. So that's that same district specific polling that Tony's pulled together from the Yale Project and Climate Change Commission. And just as with Republicans, reviewing new reports, uh, making sure that your Democrats stay informed on our issue is, is, uh, is very important. So those are the supporting asks. One last thing I'll mention here is again, we trust you. We trust you to choose what is going to move your relationship forward. So if, if none of these supporting asks are speaking to you, you're welcome to come up with your own supporting asks. That is perfectly fine. You know your district better than we ever could. And so uh, you're, you're welcome to choose on these. And we think these are high value. But if you have a better idea, uh, go for it. Hey Danny, before we before we shift gears and go into the to the roles, uh, let me just show. Uh, I, while you were gone, um, I did show folks um, <clears throat> where they could find the top topics toolkit. Sure. And I just also want to show uh, folks the the climate opinion graphs because I think that they're so stinking cool. And right. uh, yeah, so give me one second. Let me do that real quick uh, sure. here. And also, again, um, if we go back to the um, to this page that I showed you guys uh, that's available right from the homepage of community, this Washington DC uh, toolkit. And if I'm scrolling down here into the preparation section, um, hopefully we'll see um, the lobby of uh, the polling. If I keep going down, great notes, resources for the meeting. Uh, I don't see the polling in here. Okay, well, I'll show you how to find the polling. So we're gonna scroll back up to the, I'll get that in there. I did not know why that's not in there. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top here, uh, click the search and support button, and I'm, I'm pretty sure all I need, it's called climate opinion graphs or something like that. Uh, da, da, da. Climate opinion. Yes, there we go. There's a lesson on how to use them, but then also this link right here We'll take you to a page where there will be a button at the bottom that says, hey, this gives you a lot of information about them. But here, this uh, link at the bottom says download the graph. And so you click on this, it's going to take you to a Google Drive a folder. And it's going to take a bit to load because, as you can imagine, uh, especially if it's a, if this is for the House of Representatives, uh, this is going to take a while to load. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll let that continue to load. I don't want to hold up this <laughs> this meeting here because that might take a bit. Um, another tool I'll show you real quick um, that we were just talking about. If we go back to the Washington, D.C. lobby page, Danny was talking about supporting asks. Again, that should be available from here uh, when you are preparing for your meeting. Here we go. 
And we'll talk about this in just a second, what the meeting leader is, but usually the meeting lead helps you settle on supporting ads. So again, you can click on this link here and it's gonna take you to a page on community where it's gonna have a lot more detail uh, for what Danny was just talking about. Um, and it's broken down by Republican offices and Democratic offices. So lots of information in here about the supporting ask as well. All right, so Danny, uh, why don't you uh, get us started, kick off a little bit. Um, well, let me see if this is loaded real quick, the opinion, oh yeah, it looks like it has. So let me download one of these real quick and just show you guys. If it'll download. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> so you can see it's uh, pulling up the Google document better. You can see, so this is a te Texas District 14. Um, you can see it, uh, it has the yes, no, and don't know. Yes is in blue, no is in uh, the yellow, and gray is the don't know on different questions, like is global warming happening? This is what they estimate the opinion to be in that district based on some surveys they've done, but also on some modeling. So it's not, this is not to say that they've um, uh, surveyed enough a representative sample of District 14 to have these results, but they surveyed enough of the U.S. and they know enough about this district to, to make these estimates. So you can see some really uh, interesting information in there. And um, as uh, Danny was mentioning, um, they go in and talk also about um, you know, ways to address it as well. Um, and some national opinions on ways to address it, whether it be through tax and regulation, and even breaks it out to, to people who voted for Republicans and people who voted for uh, President Trump as well. So some really good information in there in those climate opinion uh, graphs. Uh, Danny, why don't you uh, get us kicked off here uh, discussing the roles that people can take uh, in a lobby meeting? Sure, sounds good to me. Uh, so there are seven roles or six roles which we identified. Uh, there is the, the leader, the asker, the note taker, the timekeeper, the appreciator, and the follow up. Uh, these are, uh, that's a lot of roles. There won't necessarily be six people in your meeting. Uh, so you should be, you should be flexible. But this is a good way that we found to, to break things down. And each of these people, even if it's very simple, uh, it makes sure that it doesn't get dropped. When you're going into a, a meeting and everybody's very high energy, you've been preparing for this for a long time, you've flown across the country, it can be easy to, to f forget something. And so if everybody has a role and uh, they're ready to do that thing, even if it's something very simple, it is less likely that that is going to get dropped. So it's, it's useful to assign these roles. And because there may not be six people in each meeting, you should be ready to assume multiple roles. And regardless of who has which role, you wanna make sure that everybody has the opportunity to participate in the discussion. If you have um, you know, which, that which might not be a speaking role, like the note taker, uh, if you have something unique to contribute to the conversation, we ask that everybody be flexible enough that that is, that is welcomed and that contribution is, is able to be made. So these are some possible roles. And uh, after that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive a little bit deeper on the leader. And so usually within CCL, it's the liaison who is the leader. Uh, this is the face of CCL with the congressional office, not necessarily at our lobby day, but just for the relationship in general. And so to make it makes sense that the liaison who is um, the point person for the, the staffer and liaising between the group and the office, that they would be the leader in the meeting. They're cultivating the relationship with the office over time. Uh, if ideally this would be an experienced volunteer who has a sense for how, how the meeting flows, how these meetings flow, and they can assign roles uh, before the meeting, uh, they can uh, manage transitions, and they can make sure that uh, everybody who has, has a role is able to fulfill that role. Uh, definitely, they should be a constituent if possible. Uh, this, this won't always be possible in June, but that's, that's also okay. This is the, the ideal case. Uh, so that's, there. you should also think of the leader as a bit of a conductor who is conducting um, the many voices of an orchestra. So they, 
hopefully and best practice empower everyone to participate, uh, they handle the transition. So let's say that somebody is going on too long or they've already made their point, the leader would tactfully uh, signal to them that it's time to move on, it's time to have somebody else speak or it's time to listen. Listening is, is key in all these, all these meetings and the leader would make sure that your team is allowing, allowing you to listen to the congressional office. Uh, the lead is also in charge of keeping the meeting on track and uh, make sure that the, the meeting ends on time. So they would be keeping, um, keeping communication uh, non-verbally, most likely, uh, with the timekeeper, uh, and then helping the team before the meeting settle on the supporting ask. So everybody knows before they go in, what is our supporting ask going to be? going to this meeting. So the leader is like the conductor uh, for the meeting. All right, thanks, Danny. Um, so I'm gonna talk about a couple of other roles and we'll talk about practice and we'll have some time for some questions here. So the asker, right? What does this person do? The asker is... Uh, uh -oh. Sorry about that, I clicked on my mute button, sorry. Uh, the asker is uh, someone who is able to clearly and confidently state our one ask. And again, we said this earlier, but it's to introduce or support legislation that puts a fee on carbon and returns the net proceeds back to American households. And the person in this role really needs to be able to demonstrate active listening because they got to respond to when, when we deliver the ask. They have to listen to what the person says uh, understand what they're saying and be able to respond. So you really want someone who has a pretty good grasp of our policy to, to be the asker. And here's an example of what that might sound like. Uh, I'll play the CCL volunteer introducing the ask. Representative Smith, you know, our big goal is to get effective national legislation passed. And as you know, we would like you to introduce or support legislation that puts a fee on carbon and returns the net proceeds back to American households. Is that something you can support? Now, if he says no, or she says no, or he says yes, <laughs> I'll say, that's terrific. Let's talk about next steps, right? So I need to active listening, go right into next steps and help them figure out something we can do to move them along. But if no, this is where I've got to be an active listener. You know, can you tell us more about what, what you need to do or what needs to happen to get your support? Or can you tell us more about what you object to in the proposal? So you need to be able to pivot then right into the, to the uh, conversation. All right, let's talk about the next role, the note taker. Extremely important role within CCL. If possible, the note taker will be an experienced lobbyist. And you know why? Because an experienced lobbyist or someone who's been in a few of these meetings can really pick up on the subtleties in the conversation and really quickly identify the important themes that are happening in the conversation as well. Now, it, the notes help us in a lot of ways. They help us both locally and nationally. And locally, think about this. You know, if you're a, a group that's been meeting with the member of Congress or maybe meeting for the member of Congress for your first time, the notes that have been provided in the past keep a running record of where your member of Congress stands and how their position may have evolved over time or what their concerns may have been. So it helps that running record for you. It helps inform uh, those future meetings as well and guides our follow-up that we're going to do. And it also it acts as, allows us to act on items we might forget, uh, especially if you're in D.C., you're meeting with five or six offices. Hey, you might not remember what every office um, uh, asked for. And so good notes will help you with that. Um, and in the situation where a liaison may retire or, uh, you know, somebody might move or whatever the case may be, uh, the notes help us pass on that knowledge as well. Now, nationally, as I mentioned earlier, one of the really cool things that happens after DC is that Danny and his elves get together, right? And they figure out uh, what, what do all these meeting minutes mean when combined in the aggregate? And uh, what are the trends that we're seeing both locally and nationally? And what should we be start preparing ourselves to address uh, going forward? And so that's really gives us a big picture sense and helps us identify trends at the national level. So there are some good things to know that you should capture during a meeting um, if you're a note taker. First of all, what was the supporting ask, right? Because that's something they've probably agreed to do. So we need to make sure we know what that is. In the concerns, questions, or even the recommendations that they had about our policy or even our strategy. 
know, this is important as well. You know, what was the tone of the meeting? Were they engaged? Were they interested or were they hostile? Um, and this is important because Danny actually uh, categorizes this and catalogs this because you can see, you know, one of those national trends we've been able to note over time is a sort of softening uh, to CCL or maybe even to climate policy that people are uh, paying more attention, they're asking better questions, less confrontational and all that. Uh, we've been able to pull out of uh, people noting what the tone and the body language was uh, from the meeting. Um, but really important as well is discuss that with other people too when you leave the meeting. We'll talk about the debrief here in just a second, but um, you know, sometimes people have different perceptions, so it's good to see what everyone else think, thought about that as well. You'll also talk about follow-up items, not only for yourself, uh, but for your group. And if you want to, there's a whole entire lesson we have on taking good notes. Uh, you can just search taking notes on CCL community. Again, uh, debrief right after the meeting, get together with, with the team, scoot, scoot down the hall, step outside the building. If you're, you know, in the district, whatever the case may be, but review the notes together. And this is important because what you want to do is you want to do it while it's fresh in everyone's mind. And you just want to make sure that everything that the, the note taker captured was how you remembered it as well. And maybe there's some things that they forgot. So it's great, but don't do it directly outside the office. Right. So when these guys get together to talk about pitching on the mound. So for those of you on the phone, this is a uh, yeah, it looks like the relief pitcher's been called in, you know, the infield always comes in to talk to everybody. Well, they don't do this near the batter's box, right, where the batter is, right? They do this out on the mound away from the batter. So uh, just like us, we wouldn't want to have our debrief directly outside the member of Congress's office. First of all, they may hear you. <laughs> And, um, you know, it's just, it's just not appropriate. So don't, don't do that there. Um, confirm who's going to be following up and who's responsible for doing all the follow-up. And everyone signed the thank you card, which is something um, that we ask uh, for you to leave uh, or to mail to your member of Congress. All right, well, so the, the timekeeper. Uh, at the beginning of the meeting, the timekeeper is going to confirm. It's part of our meeting uh, outline or meeting agenda. You know, how much time do you have for this meeting today? And what we usually ask the timekeeper to do is to signal the leader somehow uh, when there's five minutes left. And, you know, a lot of times you can just raise your hand and say, hey, we want to be respectful of your time. We notice there's about five minutes left. We're going to begin wrapping up now. Um, but you also should be able to read the body language that's happening in the room. If someone's looking at their watch, uh, someone meaning a member of Congress, their staffer, if they've closed their notebook, if they've uh, uh, put the cap on their pen, it's probably time to, to end the meeting then, right? And we want to go ahead and do so. Um, the thing is, is it, you know, when the time is running low or it's time for the meeting to be over, that's not the time to try to cram in every point that we've got to make. In fact, we know this is a relationship and that we're going to have more meetings. So take that approach. Uh, be, you know, be respective of their time. If, they, if they've got to go and you can tell that uh, they need to go even though they told you they have 30 minutes, go ahead and end the meeting on time. You always want to leave them wanting more. And remember, this is a relationship. We are developing relationships with them. All right. The appreciator might be the most pivotal thing you can do in a meeting. Uh, there's so many stories in CCL, and Amy can tell them, and Danny can tell them. Uh, anyone who's been in probably five meetings can tell you that uh, they've been in a meeting where when you set the tone at the beginning and, uh, and really laid down what you appreciate that member of Congress for, or something that they've done, how it can change the tone of the meeting, um, even, even from the very beginning. Or you can, sometimes you can do the appreciation um, in the middle if things are going rough right? Throw out an appreciation right in the middle as well. Uh, it really does help. So give them a recent accomplishment they've done. If possible, let a constituent do this. It will mean more from them. But it's important here to be genuine about it. And sometimes that can take some digging, right? Um, but, you know, literally, I mean, there's nothing I don't think that any of us couldn't find in, in someone else that we genuinely appreciate. So even if it's just uh, the fact that they've served in Congress for so many years, um, that, that's, a, that's something that you can really find that you genuinely appreciate them for. Uh, my member of Congress, I don't have a lot in common with him, uh, but he's in the military, uh, you know, served many, many years in the military, he was actually a, a, a prisoner of war, you know, so there's things in there I can find that I appreciate him for um, protecting our country as well. All right, the most important thing, about setting appreciation and tone. We talk about this so much about seeing the best in others and um, 
Uh, you know, we talk a lot about uh, eliminating our bias to blame people and trying to understand the context within the, which within you know that they operate or the context of their job. So setting that appreciation and looking for appreciation for somebody can really help take that chip off of your shoulder as well. So that's really important. All right, uh, a couple other things we're gonna to touch on here and we're getting close to the end. So I'm gonna speed through these a little bit. Um, we have the, uh, the lever, right? Uh, I'm sorry, hang on, I got this thing in my way. The follow-up person, right? This is the person that does the uh, follow-up. It's usually the liaison uh, because they're the one, as Danny said, is cultivating a relationship. We wanna make sure we give them a thank you card for their meeting, be respectful of their time. Um, also wanna make sure that we follow up with what they agreed to do and also, and more importantly, what we agreed to do. If we said we we're gonna send them some reports or do something, do something for them, let's make sure um, that we do that. And when we're following up with them, just like Amy always says, with the, when you're setting a meeting with a member of Congress, when you're following up with them as well on an ask, a supporting ask, you wanna practice that polite persistence, right? So you wanna be polite, but you do wanna be persistent. The last role we've got is the lever. And this is surprisingly easy to forget, but this is the person that should make sure that we hand them the ask that you see. It's our one page leave behind. We wanna make sure we leave that. We don't wanna leave other stuff. Um, we know that staffers are, are unless they ask for it, uh, but usually a staffer is overworked. Uh, they don't want you to hand them a big report. Uh, they usually uh, do all their work you know, through electronically. So. Um, if you have something, if they ask for something, uh, we could ask to email it, it to them. And we talk about this a lot just in the last 10 years. Members of Congress have seen a, anywhere from a 200 to 1,000 percent increase in communications. And they still have, uh, in the House, they still have the staff levels that they had back in the 70s. So you can imagine how overworked these folks are. But always leave behind that one page ask. And if they ask for something, that's fine. If something else, that's great. But don't offer. Don't go in and, and add, you know, say, oh, I want to leave this Remy report, you know, 154 page report with you. Um, they're probably not going to read it. Um, and, uh, you know, they'll probably just file it in the wastebasket. All right. So the last thing I want to talk about is just practice. And Danny, um, there's a, there's a, uh, a, a thought or a, 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 I guess a reputation that we have earned in DC uh, as being, uh, one of the most well-rehearsed and well-prepared groups that, that, that come to, or maybe the most. Um, I'll let you tell your story, I guess, your perception of, and what other people tell you about CCL and DC. Yeah, I, I hear great things. Um, but I, I, think, I think what you may be referring to, Ricky, uh, specifically is that uh, I, I'm not aware of any other group on any topic that has as many meetings as we do. So, uh, and this is coming from the the RNC chairman uh, at the time I was meeting with them, Rance Priebus. So they were they were not aware of any other group, uh, citizen advocacy group on any topic that has many meetings as we do. But in addition to that, I do hear uh, from other folks around town, uh, other other people who are lobbying independently of us, that CCL does have a, a good reputation, uh, and they people are, are just impressed. So I hear lots of positive stories about the work you guys are doing in these offices. And we, we at this point, we do have a, an excellent reputation and we wanna keep that reputation. Absolutely. So a couple of things, um, you know, the, just, to, just to touch on here and then we'll have time for a few questions. Um, it, like Danny said, it's our, it's our reputation. Uh, people expect us to be prepared. It demonstrates respect for their time too, right? Um, if someone just goes into a meeting and they're not prepared, you really got to question them and like, and uh, you know, what they're really trying to do, but also, um, you know, are they respectful of your time? These, uh, a member of Congress will have 13 meetings in a day, right? So um, don't be the one that stands out as being the, um, the one where the people aren't prepared. Um, being prepared allows you to be present in the meeting and pay attention instead of uh, uh, having anxiety over what you're going to say, you're already prepared. And it helps to develop trust in others as well. So if you're doing that practice and your guys are sitting around before uh, a meeting and you're, you're discussing, um, you're going to find out that everyone in your team is prepared to do something and to do something well. Um, you know, it, it takes, it takes a team and it's nice to see, oh, well, maybe I don't have to be the one that, um, uh, is the expert on this subject. It looks like someone else is already here in this group. So that's great. Right. Um, so it helps you develop that trust, uh, in the team if you do that practice. 
When will we have time to practice? So I'm just going to touch this real quick. Material is going to be sent the week before DC. Uh, it'd be good if you can to jump on uh, once you're if you're a, on a team. You're you're it, you'll get your schedule. The uh, meeting leader will be listed there. Maybe the meeting leader will set up a conference call or uh, try to do something before DC. But here's a great thing about this year's conference, and if you're going to DC, um, is that we will actually have time. Uh, for teams to get together and meet on that Monday night. So the Monday night, the program ends about 6.15. And so that gives a lot of extra time that we haven't had in years past uh, for folks to meet in DC as well. So there'll be that time. And this is a district meeting. You obviously have plenty of time to, to meet ahead of a district meeting and get things planned as well. Uh, you also have some time between meetings in DC. And here's what I would say. Uh, Mark always says this, and I know Danny's probably heard this a million times, so has Amy, but practicing in front of a mirror. It really helps you to see and to understand your facial expressions and how you're coming across uh, and when you're talking to yourself in front of a mirror. So I would suggest doing that as well. Uh, but hey, can I add, um, in addition to mirrors, sometimes you can also take your, um, your cell phone and take a video of yourself because sometimes it helps with that. You ah. listen to yourself and hear that as well. Oh, I like that. Thank you so much. That's a great, <laughs> that is a great idea. Yeah, because I know when I see these Zoom meeting recordings, I hate, I hate seeing how I come across. All right, so let's see here. We got time for questions. We got, uh, oh, we got, oh, well, we got about three minutes, but we can stay a little bit later. Danny doesn't have anything but you know, kids to deal with. Um, so, what's that? It, so, go ahead. If you have a question, uh, please tell us your name and uh, tell us your question. Hi, this is Sabrina from Ellicott City, Maryland. And my question has to do with the follow-ups. Reading um, the previous notes is helpful, except we often do not have no idea whether the follow-up actually occurred. And I'm mm. afraid that more often than not, when I investigated, the follow-up hasn't occurred. So I had asked um, Tony if he, if he could think about how to you know, put in additional notes after the notes have been submitted so that we can see if the follow-up has occurred. Do you know what's happened to that? Uh, no, I don't. So we can we can take that offline, and we can try to figure that out. That could be something maybe for uh, we can talk about post conference. Yeah, uh, I, did, I have not heard anything about that, Sabrina. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I don't. I wish I could answer that, but it's not, it's, a, it's a fantastic idea, right? Trying to figure out did we were we able to follow up on things? I I agree. And also to help nudge people to actually follow up because I'm afraid we fall short on that. Yeah, and also to see what, what types of asks are being made, right? So we could track right, all the right. different asks as well. So I think it's a great idea. Uh, anyone else got any questions for myself? Uh, Amy's also on if um, she, if anyone has any scheduling questions. <laughs> Amy? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Dick Barron from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Now, my question was in terms of an ask for the state senators, uh, since there's no uh, climate caucus and there's not too much going on in the Senate right now, what ideally would be the pitch uh, to Democratic senators? Yeah, uh, I'll take that. Thanks. Uh, I think that a lot of, a lot of the asks, uh, supporting asks that we, we mentioned there would also work for, for Democrats. And like I said, we want to see something like the Climate Solutions Caucus in the Senate. So just as it's a good idea to ask representatives in the house, who do you work with across the aisle? And would you join the Climate Solutions Caucus with them in the Senate? You could say, who do you work well with across the aisle? And would you form something like the Climate Solutions Caucus in the Senate? So that's what I'd recommend for your Democratic Senator. Thank you. Yeah, and Jeff asked, and Danny, you can address this, he'd ask in the chat, you know, are there asked pages prepared or does liaison um, prepare it? And I think, um, I think what Jeff's referring to is the supporting ask, right? Do we have a supporting ask? Because we did show that we have, a, you know, the one page leave behind as a primary ask. Danny, do you want to address that? Yeah, we do have a one page leave behind, uh, which has our primary ask. There is a line on there where you can write and write your supporting ask. Uh, but that's, uh, if, you're, if you're doing a supporting ask, because we do wanna uh, allow you to have so much freedom there, and uh, we trust you more than we trust ourselves to figure out what's best for your member of Congress, given the history in the district. Uh, if you wanted something different, you would, you would have to prepare that. But everybody will have the main ask, and there is space to write in your supporting ask on that, on that one page. 